Let's talk Texas SB 763. Texas SB 763 is a new law that allows school districts to replace counselors with untrained, unqualified chaplains. We are firmly against putting chaplains in public schools, which are not the place for religious instruction. Houses of worship, religious institutions, and families are the ones who should be responsible for religious instruction. This is a case of government overreach into spiritual matters, in other words, a violation of the separation of church and state. This new law went to effect on September 1st and gave each school district six months to decide whether they will accept or reject the program. This means school districts have until March 1st to vote, and there are still over 1,000 school districts that need to do so. Most of them haven't voted yet, so there's still time to make a difference. And this is really encouraging. The school districts that have heard from their constituents as to why they should not adopt this bill have chosen to reject chaplains in their schools. This is a huge concern to those of us who believe the government should have no role in denigrating or advancing religion. Proselytizing is the job of the church, not the government. It's vitally important to understand the backstory of this bill. Let me be clear, this new law was pushed by a group aiming to convert children to Christianity. Rocky Malloy is the head of the National School Chaplain Association and for decades has promoted school chaplains as a tool for evangelism. Malloy is the founder of Mission Generation, which had been open about its desire to proselytize in schools. Malloy has said that the largest network in any country was the school system, which is why he targeted it for evangelizing. Mission Generation bragged about how it would influence those in education until the saving grace of Jesus becomes well-known and students develop a personal relationship with him. The goal behind this push for chaplains is clear, and so is the danger to religious freedom. Let's stop listening to me and let's go to a constitutional lawyer who's going to tell us why we should oppose this bill both morally and legally. So what are your concerns with this law from a First Amendment perspective? My biggest concern is just the complete disregard for religious liberty in the public schools that this bill uh, contemplates. The legislation requires school districts to vote on whether or not to create a new employment or volunteer opportunity that replaces school counselors with anyone who can pass a background check. It borrows the title of chaplain, but then fails to define it and gives no qualifications for who can be a public school chaplain. Government chaplains in every other setting have specific qualifications to meet and maintain and can can be held accountable for their actions. Like all government entities, public schools must comply with the Constitution. Public schools in particular are tasked with protecting the constitutional rights of all students and staff. Public schools should neither promote religion nor unnecessarily inhibit a student or staff member from engaging in religious practices. An undefined chaplain program that gives unqualified chaplains access to public school children is a promotion of religion that will harm students and staff. The most recent public school religious freedom case at the U.S. Supreme Court said that a coach has an individual right to engage in a short moment of prayer when his players were otherwise engaged. While public school students may evangelize their peers and lead in prayer and other religious practices, It remains a constitutional violation for school staff and volunteers to evangelize public school children. Parents and guardians should be choosing their children's spiritual influences, not school board trustees and superintendents. But we have government chaplains in other settings. Why not have them in public schools? It's a great question. Chaplains in public schools, especially as envisioned under Senate Bill 763, violate the religious freedom of of students, staff, and parents. Our public schools educate around 90% of American school children and are the first place where we come together to learn how to live, work, and play with our neighbors who pray, think, and act differently from us. Senate Bill 763 fails to respect the religious diversity of our public schools. The most common settings for those other government-approved chaplains are in the military, prisons, and hospitals. The role of chaplain is to help the individual access the religious practices that they want to engage in but cannot do so because of their context. So for example, military service members may face language or security barriers if they went off base for a worship service. So chaplains are present on bases um, and can help the service members from any religious background practice their own faith. Prisoners don't get hall passes to attend worship services out in the community, so they need chaplains who can create space for them within the prison to engage in religious practices. And then patients in government hospitals may be too far away from their own house of worship 
to meaningfully engage in a religious practice. So chaplains at times stand in for the patient's religious community. And none of this is true for our public school children. Public school children are living with a parent or a guardian and attending a local public school. Public schools protect the religious freedom of students who are free to engage in numerous religious activities while at school, such as prayer and evangelism, joining religious clubs, and including religious themes or subjects in homework assignments. There is simply no government-imposed barrier on public school students and staff that a chaplain would alleviate. In addition to being a constitutional law attorney, you're also a Baptist minister. How do you approach this law as a clergywoman? As an ordained Baptist minister who trained with, let me say, some phenomenal chaplains, I oppose the goals of Senate Bill 763. The group behind this legislation, Mission Generation, seems to think that chaplains are some sort of undercover missionaries who sneak into untapped mission fields and convert all those whom they encounter. And this is simply not who chaplains are. Chaplains are not undercover missionaries. They are highly skilled professionals who are trained to walk alongside individuals to help them navigate their own spiritual journeys. Conversion, proselytization, and evangelism are simply not the goals of professional chaplains. And it is offensive to me that the state of Texas borrows a religious title, then declares that anyone who can pass a background check is good enough to counsel public school children and be some sort of panacea for all societal problems. This is a disservice to the profession of chaplaincy and endangers our students and staff members in Texas public schools. Chaplains in public schools deserve better treatment than this from our elected leaders. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for your time. Thank you, Georgia. Okay, now that we know everything about this bill, here's what you can do about it. First, adopt a school board. Become a volunteer leader in this effort by telling us you're willing to take the lead in your school district. If your district has already voted, adopt a nearby district. Email us at texas at bjconline.org to let us know you're willing to do this. Some other actions we encourage you to take are create a neighborhood petition, share on social media. We have graphics you can use. Third, email your board of trustees as soon as possible. The earlier and more they hear from you, the better. And then once you know that your school board is taking up the vote, register to speak at the meeting. Give your personal testimony as to why you believe unqualified and untrained chaplains shouldn't replace counselors in public schools. And we'll end on this note. Real chaplains don't want these school chaplain programs. And they say that even they aren't qualified to do what SB 763 is asking them to do. That speaks volumes. You can read the letter in full on our website. If you have any questions or if you want to share a story about your advocacy in your school district, email us at texas at bjconline.org. Together, we can protect religious freedom for all and end Christian nationalism.